The U.S. Navy says that the Freedom Class Littoral Combat Ship USS Little Rock will get a 150 kilowatt class laser weapon system from Lockheed Martin this year. This would make Little Rock the third of the U.S. Navy warships to be fitted with a high power laser. Viewers may note that Arleigh Burke class destroyer USS Dewey and the San Antonio class landing platform dock amphibious ship USS Portland have got lasers installed last year. As reported by USNI News, US Navy Vice Admiral Richard Brown, commander of Naval Surface Forces, told reporters about the imminent laser installation on January 13, 2020. Vice Admiral Brown did not reveal what laser the Navy would install on Little Rock, but some variant of Lockheed Martin's High Energy Laser and Integrated Optical Dazzler and Surveillance System, or Helios, seems to be the most likely one. In this video, Defense Updates reports on the USS Little Rock getting a 150 kilowatt class laser. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder, the most comprehensive military vehicle online game for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, in which you can go to battle on more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s. The game has an amazing attention to detail and focuses on a realistic combat experience, which is why knowing your vehicles and skill really makes a difference. It's easy to get into and all you need to play is nothing more but your mouse and keyboard or controller. Immerse yourself in cross-platform combat with more than 20 million other military vehicle enthusiasts from all over the world. Download and play War Thunder for free using the link in the description below and also get a free bonus tank, aircraft or ship and three days of premium account. The Littoral Combat Ship LCS, is a set of two classes, the Independence and Freedom. Construction of the Freedom class is spearheaded by Lockheed Martin at Fincantieri Marinette Marine Shipyard in Wisconsin, while that of Independence class ships is led by Austal USA in Alabama. These are relatively small surface vessels and primarily designed for operations near shore. During the late 1990s, the U.S. Navy understood that cruisers and destroyers would be vulnerable to attacks in shallow coastal waters. Large warships like cruisers and destroyers are designed for open ocean warfare and not for shallow water where these can be targeted by high-speed boats, missile-firing fast attack craft, small submarines, sea mines, and land and air-launched anti-ship missiles. The idea behind the literal combat ship, as described by former Secretary of the Navy Gordon R. England, is to create a small, fast, maneuverable and relatively inexpensive member of the DDX family of ships. If required, these ships will absorb an attack and protect the much more expensive cruiser or destroyers. The LCS is envisioned to be networked, agile, stealthy surface combatant capable of defeating anti-access and asymmetric threats in coastal waters. Interestingly, the LCS has a modular design. The vessels can be configured with different modules for specific roles that include anti-submarine warfare, mine countermeasures, anti-surface warfare, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, homeland defense, maritime intercept, special operations, and logistics. In the long run, the LCSs are expected to progressively replace slower and specialized ships such as minesweepers and amphibious assault ships. USS Little Rock LCS-9 is a Freedom Class Littoral Combat Ship LCS, of the United States Navy. She is the second ship named after Little Rock, the capital city of Arkansas. USS Little Rock has a length of 115 meters that's 378 feet, and a displacement of 3,500 tons when fully loaded. The ship uses two Rolls-Royce MT-30 36 megawatt, 48,000 horsepower, gas turbines and two Colt Peelstick 16 PA-6B 6.8 megawatt, 9,100 horsepower diesel engines to power four Rolls-Royce steerable water jets. USS Little Rock has a speed of 47 knots plus, that's about 54 miles per hour or 87 kilometers per hour, 
and has a range of 3,000 nautical miles, which is 6,500 kilometers or 4,000 miles. It accommodates 50 core crew and a total of 65 with mission crew. The design of the vessel incorporates a large reconfigurable C-frame to allow rapidly interchangeable mission modules, a flight deck with integrated helicopter launch, recovery and handling system, and the capability to launch and recover boats, manned and unmanned, from both the stern and side. In a standard configuration, USS Little Rock armament will consist of an 11-cell Raytheon RIM 116B C-RAM missile defense system, BAE systems Mark 110 56mm naval gun, and Mark 50 lightweight torpedoes launched from torpedo tubes. It can accommodate two fire scouts or one Seahawk. USS Little Rock could be armed with naval strike missiles for anti-surface warfare if required. Viewers may note that the U.S. Navy had awarded Lockheed Martin a $150 million contract in 2018 with options worth up to $943 million for the development of high-power laser systems. The program aims to develop two prototypes, one for land and another for warships. As per Lockheed Martin with the Helio system, it will help the Navy take a major step forward in its goal to field a laser weapon system aboard surface ships. The Helios effort is focused on rapidly developing and deploying a 60 kilowatt high energy laser with growth potential to 150 kilowatts. Lockheed Martin said it demonstrated that a 10 kilowatt system can defeat small airborne targets with the speed of light capability, and that a 30 kilowatt system has disabled a stationary truck target. Helios combines three key capabilities fused into a single weapon system. 1. A high-energy laser system The high-energy fiber laser will be designed to counter unmanned aerial systems and small boats. 2. A long-range ISR capability Helio sensors will be part of an integrated weapon system and provide intelligence, surveillance, target acquisition, and reconnaissance capability. 3. UAS Dazzler Capability The Helios Dazzler will be used to disable UAS of rivals. Lasers have some very important advantages when compared to conventional weapons. The speed of light enables them to hit their targets almost instantaneously. Laser weapons also don't need to carry ammunition like traditional systems, and hence they'll be able to take out a much larger number of threats constrained only by the power supply limit of the platform. This is pretty significant, as traditional air defense systems can run out of ammunition when encountering a large number of incoming threats. Lasers are also much cheaper and could cost as little as a dollar per shot. It's interesting to note that the U.S. Navy has already taken steps to provision for laser technology in its latest Ford-class supercarriers. Ford-class has two Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors. Each one of these are capable of producing 300 megawatts of electricity, triple the 100 megawatts of each Nimitz-class vessel. The huge power supply provides the legroom required for inducting lasers and electromagnetic railguns. Laser is important since American rivals have put a lot of effort into developing and deploying several types of very capable anti-ship missiles. Russia and China have supersonic anti-ship missiles. Not only this, Russia has already deployed a hypersonic air-launched cruise missile, Kinzhal, that could target naval assets and is in the process of arming its warships with Zircon hypersonic anti-ship missile. Traditional anti-missile defense onboard American warships like RIM-162A Evolved Sea Sparrow missile will invariably find it difficult to intercept these missiles. As laser technology matures, it could be a great counter against this threat. It's to be noted that laser is not the only system being developed to meet emerging threats. The Congressional Research Service said in a May report that the U.S. Navy is developing three new ship-based weapons – lasers, an electromagnetic railgun, 
and a gun-launched guided projectile. As per the report, these weapons could substantially improve the ability of surface ships to defend against small surface craft, unmanned aerial vehicles, and eventually anti-ship cruise missiles. The report states, any one of these new weapons, if successfully developed and deployed, might be regarded as a game-changer for defending Navy surface ships against enemy missiles. The research service noted that the U.S. Navy has made substantial progress toward deploying lasers on ships. Focus on lasers indicates that the U.S. Navy is actively working to transition to non-kinetic weapons. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.